Hello and welcome to this new video when we're going to create this painterly kind of compositing from our original image. So we're going to use this um, shot that I shot in a studio with a single light setup. Actually right here it's, it kind of was a soft box. I already leave it to remove it in this image. But um, let's look on original so you can see right here it's our original with soft box. It was shot on a Canon R5 a single light uh, soft box and a little bit with a fog machine created which is actually uh, not necessarily we want it but we'll uh, kind of will work with this and what we're going to do it's using this compositing to create this image um, with the backgrounds two different backgrounds and with additional effect so let's go ahead and start working on this um, image let's begin by selecting image which we're going to process and right here some photos from photo shoot I use it for different um, shots like for example this one I did some with the uh, like angel wings you can see in preview but I was thinking use it um, a little bit different poses and the one when you select poses we want something that expressive as well that with good lighting and positioning so right there we have it one which is kind of nice and I'm looking on feet visible we have it I think maybe we can go use this um, image because we have the expression go up we can play with lights a little bit more uh, we do have it a couple right here hot spot on the hand so we needed that one to reduce uh, because if we're doing from far away lighting the light should be about even going from here so we'll need to reduce lights on the hand which is kind of nice because that was shot on a Canon R5 with um, quite a bit nice dynamic range so we can easily restore of the slides and it's another thing why you always want to shoot in a RAW because we have all this information we can restore it and I think we're going yeah let's go ahead and use this one and I have it marked before some other ones that may work as well um, this one's kind of work nice because we don't have it hand out but it is encapsulated but I think this one may work actually um, quite a bit interesting for us so let's go ahead we'll go open this and I'm just open in a camera raw to process and uh, said before it is will be interesting to adjust with our hand and we'll look right there you can see how it's bright to do this we'll go on highlights and we'll just take highlights all the way down and you can see how well it's recover actually lighting and it's what we want to do we'll take shadows pop up just a little bit up have them um, a little bit flatten we did use it um, the fog machine when I shot this and you can see we have it some fog elements um, sometimes if one implement don't want it it depends on what is idea this was idea to do in the clouds but because we're doing not in the clouds that could be a little bit different but I think we'll pull out this fine with even with fog uh, we can sharpen pop up and also if you want you can use a dehaze option there and you can see how it will reduce some of that fog but again I don't want to do we'll just leave it as a zero here uh, sharpness again to restore it about 70 Our orange color will restore some of this highlights on the skin and I may bring to about five just a little bit not too much and I think that is look about right I think we're good here and let's go ahead click open and now we'll open inside the Adobe Photoshop so the next things what I want to do it's work on a model itself I will ignore a kind of background and a problem is we could ignore we can extend so yeah let's go ahead extend right now so we'll extend we used full link and for this I want properly put it like for example right here with a corner I want to place her head inside so it's about the same sizes we'll bring a little bit down maybe like around there like around corner I want to bring her head maybe even lower so positioning there is our center we have our hand going so it's a look I think nice in this point I want to enable the content aware so it will reposition and Photoshop will take good care of to add extend the canvas and we want to extend canvas 
So it's when we apply overlays or other materials, it will, will work very well. We'll give it us this nice, nice texture on this. Let's go ahead and press enter. It will take a little bit time to process. And now you can see it is extended. However, we have it right here, this um, soft box. And for this one, we'll just go ahead and use it. We can use it or healing brush tool which is we need sampling problem is with use. Let me show you. If we use this one, we can select here and we'll go select. And sometimes it's work OK. But when you hit dark areas, they may have a little bit problem with this. I think it's work OK for now. If it doesn't, we always can go back and use it stamp cloning tool. So that will work also. And right there, I'm just kind of clean up a little bit, mostly elements. But I think that will work fine here again. We'll you'll see we'll start overlaying with other elements. Uh, next, what I want to do, it is make a copy of this. Okay. And uh, we'll want to retouch the model itself. Before we're doing retouching, we have it several ways we can approach. We can approach masking by overlaying. And that's what sometimes I do. I put it element over and just use a brush just going around. I want to show you different ways we can do its combinations between overlay and masking. And the reason why you're showing this two different techniques, because that way you can select which one is better work for you. So if you decide to do with one or another ones, using pen, it's work very well when you have hard edges and hard edges. What I was saying, example, not like hair and fur right here, it won't work very well. But from this point, we actually can select and we can use it and go hard edge like this by her arm. It's also work very well on the claws, whatever you don't have it like small elements. And notice on the edge, we have a nice anti aliasing and I'll show you how we can restore this anti aliasing afterwards when we start doing so right here, we'll go around and what I'm going to do, I'll speed up this in a post. So when I will process this video, I'll speed up and you can see, don't need to wait for me to do all these things. Okay, so we've gone around and now around her hair. What I'm going to do, you can see I'm just going quite a bit around her hair. So we're going to use a different tool for this to blend together. And down here, we also want a little bit inside. So we'll go to just create same. So just don't worry about the hair come up. We'll blend this afterwards. So right there and we'll have it a little bit I think inside here as well and uh, usually if I want it I will use it color selection to select hair out I think we'll do different way right now we'll just use it after brush and just masking paint over and I did it before similar on um another picture like this where I do always with the background um, kind of using paint brush and blend mine um, that way okay so right here we're almost done and we'll go just to let's go click right there I think control Z let me be sure I'm closing that one okay and I think that is completed. So now we can right click and says create vector mask just to verify. There you go. There's our vector mask. And for the hair, we can do a couple things. We can also just select color and add right now. And I'll show you just example. So we can select color range and we'll just click like around that there. Okay, we'll go to size you can preview and again I don't necessarily uh, at this moment but you can notice when I create the mask you can see the mask will also select out so you can combine multiple masks at that time but I don't right at this moment we'll just don't care so we'll delete it um, 
that mask, we will use different ways to approach this. But overall, this is where we can do a combine. Okay, right here we have our model. Let's go now work on retouching this. So I'm going to create a new layer. And this is, will be some touch up. And I want to be sure this is, is um, parenting or clipping to one below. You can just click and it says create clipping. So it will clip like this way. I'll hold down Alt key and clip same ways. As long as you can see this arrow kind of linking below, you know this is, will affect only layer that is below. And of course, it will apply the masking. It's what we're most interested in. Uh, let's go select our um, healing brush tool. And with healing brush, we'll be just going very close to the face. And I'm not necessarily want to remove all blemishes. Blemishes is what will make perfect. But I just want some teeny tiny elements that maybe um, stand out. And you can hold down Alt key, sample, and put it. And I like this tool because it is sampling texturing. It's almost think about this. It's like frequency separation on a local level. <laughs> so on with one. It's what actually it does and we want to do this so touch right there just small things i don't want to say um we'll go over elements here like right here maybe catalyst just a little bit but again not too much don't worry because we'll go too smooth we'll go and paint and i also notice by the fingers we have a little bit darker area we needed um masking wasn't accurate and it's a little bit on purpose because I want to show you some other ways we'll do this. Okay, like right here, maybe on a foot, just a little bit. And one thing that I don't like it, it's like this seam right here. So let's go fix that one. Select on the edge. It's kind of nice if you select on the edge, then we can you can see preserve for this. Photoshop does a very good job on that one. So let's select here, go with the edge. And we'll just paint over again right there. Kind of just hiding, removing this seam out. Okay, we'll go right there a little bit. Okay, the another one I think I don't like it was this one. And that one will be a little bit trickier, but I think we can do it. Same, we'll start from here. And one, what we want to do is go up and down, like creating strokes. And right there, let's fix it. Zoom out a little bit. So like right here, we have this um, band and we'll just select one. And we'll just extend, creating band like this. It's much easier if you um going up and down. So it will create more lines if we go with the material as it's going. So it will create a little bit better. Okay, so right here, same, let's select and just right there, going around, add a little bit. Seam, there you go. Fix it right here. It may take a little bit of time, but again, we want to be sure we're just doing a good job. And we don't need to be 100% accurate because we're going to smooth this material here, make it a bit more look as a painting. But to prepare for this will help a lot. So it will look way more real if we do um, right ways. Okay. There you go. Almost done. Just right here, a little bit touch up. And also on this, we don't need to worry too much about that. Just kind of like going a little bit. Remove that simple. So there you go. So we still have a line. You can still see it a little bit. Um, we could actually come up with a little bit smoother, like right there. Global touch, but be careful because we start losing some of the texturing, and it's not necessarily want to do this, but we'll smooth this in later. I think that is look kind of okay. Oh, right here, one small thing. So let's go ahead, right, touch up. Okay, 
one more look. Okay, I think we're looking nice here, right there on the leg a little bit. Again, it's a natural, but it was if my eyes kind of jump to this, then I will need to remove that because we want to keep it attention, not on those unnecessary details. Okay, so we're done there. Let's go now apply the smoothness to us. We'll hold down Control Shift Alt E on a PC or Command Option Alt E on a Mac. This will take all visible layers and merge them in creating brand new. And that's what we want. We want to create this new layer. We'll again we'll clip together. You can see we'll just stack, stack, stack those clippings so they all come together. And next we'll go filter noise dust and scratches so this is techniques to remove dust and scratches but for us we'll just want to remove small blemish and you can see i can see still texture what i want to do i want to increase this till i see this smooth and nice so this is what i'm going after we'll go ahead click ok and hold down alt or option and click on a mask to create it uh, black mask so now whatever changes was the hidings and by using white brush and we want to be sure we use it soft round 10% opacity, the soft, we can start painting in the smoothness. So notice what's happening. We are reducing some of this texture on our skin. It's why it's important to preserve before so we have it ability to take down. And I don't want to take absolutely smoothness, but I want to reduce to the level of the painting. Um, if you have experience painting with an oil or Mostly it's with oil kind of will be nice. Acrylic will work as well. So what do you do? You um, creating one shape, you paint, and for the skin, you just take your bristle brush and from the top, you're kind of uh, going, creating those with the darker. So you create porous on the skin, it's what you do. And uh, right now what I'm trying to do it is simulate this. So I want to reduce amount of the texture to simulate this oil painting. And by the way, you don't need necessarily take oil painting, but if you do, it will help you a lot to understand um, or at least understand how the paint, how it works. So when you start simulating um, in your Photoshop on digital media, you can do this much easier. Okay, right here, we'll just say we'll smoothing out. Somebody use this noise. One thing notice because I'm reducing noise and I will need to in the future kind of blend this with the noise. We'll add more noise later. So right here, and you remember how we start kind of uh, hiding. This is what we do. We'll add this right down material and you can see how it's already kind of start blending together. So we'll add right there. You see, it's already kind of start losing. Um, and then we'll go and just add more. The one thing is when you create, we need to be careful with details. We want details, but we don't want too much detail in some areas. This is face and eyes. This is where we want to attract our viewers. So we can reduce some of details by applying the smoothness. So it will have it less detail. So eyes let stop on there and we'll draw them to the face of our model so it's our goal first we um we always apply our smoothness because you notice it is reduce our highlights shadows and highlights because it's kind of blending it's smoothing all of them together so in logically after this we need to apply our um dodge and burn to restore some of those highlights but before we do this let's uh work on our hair make it a bit more painful paint and we'll do Control Shift Alt E, Command Option Alt E again. We'll create new layer. Let's go call its hair. Okay, and we're going to clip it as well. And now we'll go to Filter, Stylize, and we're going to use it oil painting. Okay, let's go look on our hair. And in the hair, you can see we have a nice kind of going lines. And usually we can use it scale 0, 05, stylization. 10, clean is 10, so we'll go click OK. And if it is, you don't have that a nice texture, we can always go and click sharpness, but I think this texture will look OK. Let's go hold down Alt or Option and click on a mask. Again, we're hiding what we created. And by using white brush on the mask, be sure the mask is selected, we can brush in 
some all that painting effect on my hair. We need to be careful. I don't want to brush very much, but it will add a little bit this paint stroke cleanness kind of, and it will look more and more like a painting to us. As well, we can apply just a little bit maybe on eyebrows. And if you have it male uh, model, that work very well on, um, like if they have it stubbles or beard, that work very well. As well, same techniques work very good on a fur. So if you have it a fur coat or other things, you can do the same thing on animals or clothing to create a very nice clean effect on the fur. So it just kind of start popping out very nicely. Okay, I think that is good for the hair. Let's go create new layer. And this one will fill up with 50% gray, 100% opacity on a normal mode. We'll go to clip it again, of course, this one. And you can see what clipping does. It just take behind and kind of like clip it. But we want to switch this to the soft light and this is will be our dodge and burn. So layer. And depend how you like to do, um, you prefer clear layer, whatever, it's up to you. It's so many techniques you can find there. I'm just using black and white and on a gray so I can preview. And what I'm doing, I'm just adding some shadows. I will be applying more of this as we're going to add more global lights. But this one help us to create for the local lights right now. So I'm just want to restore some of the shapes we may last by creating um, with dodge and burn. So, and usually I use X key to switch between foreground and background and my foreground and background white and black. So that will help me create highlights. Okay, go to nose, create me um, those highlights and also it's helped me to, okay, so, um, Let's zoom out and color does not necessarily showing us the um, dimensions. It's a luminosity, it's the black and white, it's what make it. So and by working with the shadows and the highlights, it's how we're creating the dimension, we're creating a depth in an image. So and that's what right here we're doing. We're just adding and remember this one was a little bit too bright. We can also just use its shadows to make it even darker to match other ones but I don't need to worry too much about this again but with these techniques with just dodge and burn you can actually create total different shapes it's a very powerful um, techniques to do it okay so right there we'll go on the leg a little bit lights okay we'll add a little bit more muscles right there and we have right here, actually, I think I forgot to remove it. Yeah, the mask right there did not apply it, which is okay. We can, that could be a very nice um, way to do it. So we can apply mask here. And I don't know why it does not apply it. So it seems like created, but probably did not pick up, which is okay. So, okay, right there, let's create a little bit darker. And you can just paint. One nice thing about this, this is non-destructive, so you can always go and modify afterwards. And I'm using bracket key on my keyboard to um, kind of add right there. Okay, we got a little bit darker. We have a foot right there, and it was in the fog. So we'll need to figure out, create maybe like uh, Maybe create some grass right around there. So we'll, we'll see when we start doing this one. Um, right here, we do have a little bit on that one. And we can maybe try to um, add to the mask. I think I did create it. For some reason, that mask did not took it. So it's okay. We'll just, maybe it wasn't close it all away. And right there we have it, our selection. So what we can do, we can create 
um, your path and we can use it this one to remove it as well in this way okay by select new selection and we can just uh, fill up with the black okay so we'll just apply the mask and have i said before if you look right here we have this mask and very easy we can combine multiple masks um, I don't worry about hair at this moment because I was thinking using the hair as well. We'll use it later when we combine everything together. So let's go ahead, look one more time. And right there you can see before and after we have a nice dodge and burn. We'll create more as we're putting model inside with some. This is a little bit more on the details, kind of to be sure shape in our model is set properly. And let's just hit add right here a little bit on her arm. Just create kind of like right there a little bit. Apply on her fingers. On the tips. Just overall, you can see it, it just add more dimension, more depth to our image. Okay, I think this is about right um, with the model. So let's go ahead, we'll select all of these, group them together and call it model. So that is our model. Now we're ready to put it some inside. And what's going on, I'm going to put it backgrounds. Um, it's a painterly backgrounds I created, but before we're actually going to um, apply them, I wanna show you. So right here, this is, you can see backgrounds. What's happening, um, sometimes when you work, you go and create uh, different photography art, and it's what I do. I go outside, um, different time, this was very early morning, take some sunrise, sunsets, and uh, I prepare a special park um, with these kind of backgrounds. I call the uh, Paintly Backgrounds, this park. It's available to purchase if you're interested. It is 27 images there and the reason why it's 27 <laughs> not 30 because i don't want to round up i want to just put it images that i think really work as a classical painting so it's very easy to use it so in that park with the backgrounds textures some even the uh, paper texture and way more is available for you to purchase i will have it linked down below or um if you patreon you can have it all of these parks for free and about three four gigabyte more of additional assets same if you want to join and support me as a patron more than welcome you'll have access to all of this um, resources and more and if not you can always get this pack get it pack with like angel wings and combine them together but it's what i'm going to use i'm going to use the, those images that actually i took by myself in process specifically for the reason to work with this kind of paintly effect paintly um kind of compositing so right here we have it, our image and what i'm going to do i'm enabling one on the background notice we have the background with everything and we have it, our isolated model and we're going to take one of this image that i have it and we'll just place it right between them so i'm going to increase size be sure like maybe around this area and we can play around because that will be changing yeah maybe like want here okay we'll go place it in and notice on the lighting this lighting going from one side the other one going from different so we'll go to edit transform and we're going to flip horizontally we want to be sure our lighting is matching next we'll take it and we'll just bring around here right there but we still have feet in the air it's not in the water so what are we going to do it combine with another one so i'll have it another image from same set we'll just go kind of like increasing oops i don't want skew i want just a little bit make bigger probably put it around here maybe and we can also skew that way I think that will work well, let's go make even kind of like that almost i think that will, will work okay and we can play a little bit more with the 
some settings, but I think right there should work and her feet now on the ground. So let's go ahead, click OK, and you can see they're all together. So right here we have our images and we have our background, which is um, kind of nice looking, but I want to blend a little bit more. So for this one, we'll go and select opacity and drop opacity kind of around, maybe like right there. So that you can see almost this texture coming with the lines going to background. And we have it another one, so we can drop this just slightly down, not too much. But here we have a thing, we have a line and we have it over here, so we want to blend this. What I want to do actually, I want to take this and put it above the model, because I want some grass casting on her. But with the arm, you can see it's sometimes hard to will be selecting. So we'll go press Control or Command and click on the model. So we'll go to select, okay, where's our model? Right here. We'll go to click and we can select masking. So we can mask out this way. And one thing actually what I would recommend before we do this, you know what, let's right click and convert to smart object. Almost any time when I work and I create a model, I want to convert to smart object. In this case, I can resize without worrying about um, scales, about losing effect and also masking will work a little bit better that way so we have it everything uh, we mask in and we can go now hold down alt key and press so now we mask out on the top we will work a little bit more with this mask but it's give it us some of those shapes that we needed okay so let's go ahead now and start kind of blending some of those elements a little bit more together like right here on the top for this we'll go um as we select it we'll still have our mask and if you don't want this mask you can always have it folder and put it inside but i think we'll keep it for now we'll take our brush with a white color and let's go first we want to remove some of these elements actually black color will work yep right there and let's zoom out well going with a hundred percent opacity and you can see if i'm going with hundred percent opacity i will just remove all of this so i don't want that on top so right here we'll just remove it okay we'll kind of start blending okay but we want to work on the bottom so same as right here we can select below one and just you know right here using just a blend there you go kind of okay let's go ahead with 20 percent so a little bit less and we'll blend right there all what we're down we kind of start blending between of them and you can see we have a very soft blending going on our tree kind of background and on this we'll blend from the top so we'll merge those two blending but because it's on top now we can blend also with the feet right here hers and for this i'm going with the black color and we'll start with 10 percent we can kind of actually i think it's a white we need yes and then we, you can see we uh let's go with 20 percent so i can blend a little bit better same like with your feet and maybe a little bit around there so we're hiding that edge a little bit okay let's go and more zoom out a little bit and I'll just add there you go Okay, you remember I told you that we want to create this soft edge and I'll ask him to blending. So to do this, let's go select, it will be um, control and we'll click on the model. So we'll select model. We'll go now uh, select, modify, and we're going to contract by two. So we'll contract it by two pixels. If we look here, you can see how it's 
kind of going contract inside. So next we'll go filter, modify, actually, uh, sorry, select, modify, feathering, and we'll go feather by one pixel. After when we're done with this, we want to be sure we select model and we hold down alt and click on a model. So as we do this click on the alt and model, you can see we have this outline going. So this is outline. It's what help us um, removing. So let's go ahead control I to inverse. But doing this, you can see the edge. So we inverse it and I just want to show you. And before and after you can see how the edge becomes smoother and blending a little bit better in there. So we still have it see through on some right there, some effect, which is OK. We're fine with that. Okay, let's go ahead and select our grass and I just want to see so we're kind of matching a little bit better. Of course, the grass not necessarily matching our background. We have it right here, muddy stuff on the water. So let's go fix it. X with one with the black. So we'll just slightly fixing of that water blending in. Okay. There you go. I think they're blending kind of nicely now. Um, again, uh, you can adjust background, play around. If you do this, right here we have a chain. You can see it's lock. Let's unlock. In this case, we don't touch mask, but we'll select only top. And that way, without mask, we can actually go around and see which how we like it. I think a little bit this way with some. I'm not sure if I want green here. No, yeah, let's go all the way here. So we don't want it. I think this way will work a little bit better. OK, but you notice how we adjust the same things you can do actually with a grass. If you are on link, you can take a grass. Oops, I don't want to do top one or select grass. And we can also just with the grass, you can adjust and see which way it will kind of work better for you. Okay, but I think around as we had before around this way. Kind of work nicer. OK, so we have it our grass and point we do want to write on the bottom so let's go ahead and do as we going forward we'll just kind of shrink even more at this point right there um i don't want to delete elements because we maybe readjust left and right but i want just crop it so we preview because if we set delete crop it pixels it will delete also some other ones elements that maybe i want to keep it to the position. So we'll do this in the end, but right now we'll need it. Let's keep this way. And I told you about a hair. What are we going to do? So right here we have our model. And let's work with the hair by selecting brush, selecting black color. And we'll start with a 20% and we can kind of start blending. And you can see what's happening. So if we can go with um, 100%. We do have it, some problems with if you can see right there. So we'll need it a little bit applied to this mask as well. But for now, we can do um, just very fast, go very close. Okay, just right there. Let's go switch to 10%. And I can switch by press one on a number one, two, three, four, five, and it's switch very fast for me. Same, we can come closer. And sometimes it's what I do when I paint, it's what I says there by, um, you can create painting similar way. You can select just the brushes. You don't need to create mask like we did before. And you can just paint blending this way. But I think, um, that way was a little bit different technique, so you can learn how to do this. But this way um, also help us to blend her hair better. Okay, so we'll just go in there. There are multiple ways you can create mask. And if you're interested, I have it 
a series of tutorials about compositing. It's a um, full big series uh, that going over all these different techniques of masking or different blending or how the compositing create the best compositing ways you can do it. Um, it is available on YouTube or it's also available if you're part of Udemy or a Skillshare. I have it on those sites as well. So you're more than welcome. Look there. But we'll just look right there. Okay, let's go ahead. Almost done on this one. And I want to go on the topper one. Okay, and actually we want to switch to white because we're on the top. And then we'll can start blending that one in. And we can blend with the hair. So it's will actually going kind of nicely matching inside here. Let's increase size and blend this one. If I do just with the blend, I usually do on top because currently you can see we have it one layer above, one layer below, and um, sometimes to work or not, but it's what we're doing at this moment. We'll just blend right here, okay? And let's remember we have a little bit right there to blend as well. And we'll just go like, blend okay. okay so we blend it a little bit and sometimes you can see it's muddy and if it's too muddy switch to the hard one and you can do a little bit better with the hard edge just on the right there by arm okay like right there we can do a little bit with hard edge to create better look but again with with the hair we do always want to have it soft and just uh, Kind of like almost semi-transparent add effect right there. Okay, uh, let's bring back the other coloring below. So we'll just look over. Okay, so I think overall let's kind of start matching. Next, we want to match with colors. Now we have it first big difference. What we um, in between them we have a different luminosity and it's different contrast if you look blacks here it's more dark blacks on her than on a background and uh, color temperature so first step I want color temperature match the grass with background because I do like this kind of warmer painting effect there so for this we'll go create uh, curves and remember like we clip before we go clip there We'll switch to color and be sure our blending mode needs set to the color because we don't want effect luminosity, just only colors. We'll start with the blue because it will give it us blue or warmer and we'll switch to the warmer, a little bit yellowish color and on the red pop up a little bit too warm. So I think this is kind of matching very well together. Um, now I want to match luminosity level on model versus our background. And for this, we'll just, again, above the model, we'll go create new curves. Uh, let's call this luminosity. And we'll go to clip to the model, switch our blending mode on luminosity. And I'm just taking away the black and bring black just a little bit up. So we don't need to do too much, but we can see, we can bring and take this a little bit down. Just right, right there, just a little bit remove our contrast and dark to match background. There you go. Now you can see our model matching a little bit better with the background. Okay, next what I want to do it is add some shadowing because definitely she's there, but we don't have a shadow from her casting or anything. We'll go and create new um, dodge and burn layer. Again, we'll fill up with 50% gray and switch to the soft light. Next, we'll take our brush. We'll go be sure it's a soft round brush and we'll go switch to the black color 10%. And we'll start adding shadows right there. Now, this is shadows. It's more what is happening where she's sitting. So now we can even retouching overall on her and also on the grass. 
around her with that and I maybe even emphasize some other darkness to make those clumps of the grass come up a little bit better. Again, we will do one more Dutch and burn just overall theme out. But this way, just like right there, lights will switch to the white. Add glowing a little bit on her from sun sim. Maybe add a little bit more on a grass. You know, some of those elements, but right here, let's make it darker, like where she's sitting. So overall, it just help us bind kind of all of this together right there. Okay, let's go ahead and um, I think at this point we're almost very close to be done. Um, just apply maybe some texturing and other effects. And texturing, what are we going to do? Um, I have it also in this pack if you're interested with the, all these painterly backgrounds i have a pack of the texture with the papers canvas and everything so it's what i'm going to use right now okay i'm going to take cold press paper just put it on the top okay and this is largest i think it's 8000 by 8000 pixels so it's kind of quite a bit large so express right there and we'll convert this to the soft light. So if you look closer, it's actually simulating some of the papers um, for this one. And we'll go to soft light. And let's go just to make a little bit, not too much. So just add slightly effect to this. Um, next, one thing if you notice, if we come closer, you notice right here, look, we have this grain and on her we have no grain. So we want to match the grains of our image. And this actually will give up quite a bit uh, if we don't do this way. Also, right here, I kind of don't like this line. So let's go back to our model. Right there, select her mask, take our brush. Let's go 10% on the white, and I just want to add, oh, actually black, black. I just want to add a little bit of transparency to background here. We'll go on the top with the grass. Now we want with the white, and we just want a little bit add transparency right there. So it just help us kind of creating a little bit more I think right there effect because I think right there wasn't uh, maybe too much little bit right there because it's a double material so we want to close it but I just want to fix it another th way you remember we have the fog before so above the paper let's create new layer let's call it fog and we'll just add a little bit of the fog also cover some elements uh, we could do also just take a plant and put it right there as well up front this is another way to do but anyway i'm going to use the fog and you can use any different fog i'm just using ron's fog and what i'm doing it's right there you can see just add slightly uh, we want to use probably soft light for this okay we can add a little bit right there and it's some of this one fog it's help us to blend all of this together let's create new one thick fog we'll just call okay and for this we'll just go select a little bit different ones okay when you're done control z undo i'm just uh, trying to um see this one we can use a different coloring so it just overall help us just a little bit blend right there and we can use a different colors usually i simple by pressing um, alt the other ways you can do it's have it uh, like a brush um, tools with the grass and you can do those ones but i think this way will work a little bit nicer so we can just add slightly right there okay working and let's reduce this opacity 
just help us kind of almost create a fog. Okay, so next one we want to create this global dodge and burn. And uh, we'll go to again, fill up with 50% uh, gray, switch to soft light. Let's go select our soft brush, 10% on a black. And this one is our global one. So what is meaning we add theme. So now you can see I'm just painting, but also we can know this is white lights coming from here. So we can also just create those white rays coming from there directly like on her hand. So we can see those rays coming right there maybe ray ray going there so almost like a lights heating so it's what we're going to do again switch to the black add a little bit more shadows it's how we compare rays to the dark but that way we can there you go add one thing um so let's go add another screen and this will be noise and the noise, as you said before, we have uh, because we have different amount of noise between all of them. So that's well, what we're we going to do. We'll just add 15 percent uniform monochromatic noise. Switch to the soft light. That way, it's help us to keep this uniformity kind of on the noise between model and a background. So it will help us to go like both ways this way. Okay, let's, you can see it. And if it's too much, we can just take it down slightly right there. Okay, let's go zoom out. Um, next, what we want to do, it is apply global color. And here's things. If you are developing this as for the like ad agency or other things, sometimes third party tools you don't want to use because what they needed, they needed to reproduce your work as you're working alone. If you work by yourself, it's fine. It's what I'm going to use third party tools. But all of this you can also reproduce if you don't have any of the special tools, you can easily reproduce by yourself. But what I'm going to do is use it the image, actually filter, and I'm going to use it filter forge for this. So let's go create a new layer by combining everything together. Control Shift Alt E command option the alt e and i like filter forge because it saved me quite a bit time by working with um colors so i created my own filter and then it's photo phototone it just saved me a lot of time instead of applying by the way um all of these filters and they have like sixteen thousand, whatever they're all free to use there you just need to buy application i think but I actually was working on a new video showing you how you can do for free getting Filter Forge. And you'll be surprised that many people can do this very easy. So right here we created uh, just very fast toning. And again, the same things you can do just with the luminosity curve, color curve, and selection color. So you can do by hand this. It's much, much faster for me to do this way. It's the reason why I'm doing true Filter Forge. You can see it's very nice coloring, add sharpness, all this stuff. Uh, so we're good on this. Let's go ahead, just take a little bit down. But I want to keep it this warmer color kind of effect. Um, we do, we're going to use it selective colors. Let's go use it on black and a black right there. We can even crush, even, or not crush, make them softer even more. And let's go put it in a little bit colder on the shadows. Okay, and right here you can see we can go just a little bit reddish, but I think we'll go a little bit cold like one. Let's go to the neutral, and this is our neutral. So we don't touch on the blacks, we'll just take it and maybe going warmer. I'm not sure. Yeah, let's go to the warmer and reddish. So it's kind of almost right there. Yeah, and then green, leave it here. We'll go with the white, and this is our white. We can bring white sleeve it up and let's go have it a little bit opposite colder on a white with magenta so and you can play how you want with the coloring it's up to you this is actually your artistic view but i want to go with this retro kind of coloring scheme a little bit warmer 
overall look. Uh, we could even apply curve to this to make more um, uh, luminosity, kind of more contrasty, but I think this way is work well. Okay, overall, right here is our image. And uh, let's, you know what, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go create all of these, merge them together. And we'll go to check. This is what we start before. You remember, we a little bit expand. But overall, this was image. And with the compositing, we're creating this kind of like almost picture, painting picture looking. Um, we could apply a little bit more additional filters, but I think this way is a good way for us to stop. We're like almost in a little bit in an hour to editing. Overall, what I want to say about um, go experiment, use it your own models, put a different backgrounds, um, try to play with compositing. Hopefully this tool is helpful. And again, um, this is um, I'm using backgrounds from my new collection that come out. It is um, painterly backgrounds, which I special designed, retouching and done um, for the backgrounds to create and those images and you can see there you can use them in many and actually you know, it's include even some of the backgrounds like from um, cities and other ones so it's a little bit more for example let me drag and bring another ones for example like this you can see it's more painting so you can have it different backgrounds it's not just the nature it's also I have backgrounds like city there which is apply or castle with a lot of texturing and everything. So it's it is selection I hope you'll find kind of interesting. And I'll do more videos. And of course I will use my backgrounds what I kind of make <laughs> produce them so I can use it in my own compositing because as well. Thank you for watching this video. If you like it please give it thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel it will help me promote. And as well leave with your comments. Let me know what you think about this video if you like to see more in this way developing or you would like something different and i appreciate and have a fun day to create your own art